Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the MB Show. This has been planned for a long time and I'm really excited that we finally made it happen. In this series we will provide you with deep dive and background information about MB and related technologies, news about recent development and guidance for features that have been added to the latest beta versions. There is no regular schedule and that means that we will publish episodes just when we get something to say or to explain or to show. And today we got a lot to show. It's all about subtitle delivery and processing. We have a whole new range of features to show and that's why we're starting the series with multiple episodes on the subject and this is the first. There's one important thing that I'm asking you to remember. In this video we're looking at a beta version and that means that all things can change. Features can be added, removed or changed. The configuration user interface may look differently and I already know that it will be located at a different place. Because right now you need to go to the plugin catalog, like here, and install the diagnostics plugin. Then you need to restart your MB server. And when you've done that, you're gonna see the advanced transcoding item on the server dashboard. And that's where we go right now. What you can see here is basically the same as the regular transcoding configuration page with a few extras. But today it's all about subtitles. So let's have a look at the subtitle options. The most important part on this page are the three options for text subtitles at the top. Those options control how text subtitles are delivered to the clients preferably, depending on the situation on what's possible. It's a preference and it's nothing totally new, as you can see here in the middle on the fly extraction. This directly corresponds to the option we already had for a long time. Previously, the natural counterpart of this was either conversion to web VTT subtitles or in most cases, subtitle burn-in as the only alternative. Now we got more capabilities. We can convert almost any text subtitle format into any other subtitle format. And that's the purpose of the first direct conversion option, which is probably a good candidate to become the default option. But it depends. All those options have their pros and cons. And it really depends on what you're expecting and what situation you have and what source material you're watching. To get a better understanding of those options, we look at a few examples. We start with the burn-in method because it provides the most accurate presentation of the subtitles rendered by the server. And so I activate that method. And a good way to understand the difference is to look at a few rather complex examples. Here I got an anime video with the ASS subtitles and we just play. Okay, here you can see already at the bottom that it is using custom fonts. The fonts are part of the video and MB extracts them and provides them to the renderer at the server, which will burn in the subtitles. Let's skip a little so you can see the animation and all this stuff and um, Japanese or whatever letters uh, animated and the custom fonts. So that's actually how it's meant to look like. Now let's change to the subtitle extraction on the fly method, which actually means that we are bypassing the streaming mechanism using a custom mechanism implemented at the HTML clients, which do its own rendering of the subtitles on the video. So let's look how it appears here. Okay, the colors are the same, though it's using a different font. 
Of course, the rendering code, the JavaScript rendering code, doesn't have that font available that is uh, attached to the video stream. So it's not exactly how it's meant to look like. But at least it's still rendering the animation. What you can see here as well, in the second line, it doesn't have the font for the Japanese letters. So it's not quite the original representation. But we also need to consider that this is a somewhat extreme example. And now we switch to the direct conversion method. With a direct conversion, uh, simply means that the server is converting the text subtitles into a format for streaming. Typically, it's uh, web VTT subtitles, which are delivered as part of the HLS streaming. Now we play again. And you can see, here it has just the text. It is rendering the text with a predefined font, which is the same for all kind of subtitles. But this can be controlled in the client settings. Let's look at another example. We're starting again with the subtitle Burn-In. And in this case, the video doesn't match the subtitles, but it doesn't matter for demonstration. It's just the subtitles which are really interesting. When you take a look at the bottom, the animation that these people have done are really awesome, given the fact that it's just a subtitle format. That's how it looks with Burn-In. Now, take a look at the variant with the local client ASS rendering. And not sure if you will be able to see it in the video, but um, it's already getting to the limits of uh, JavaScript rendering. This um, single core CPU usage is at maximum already, and that's Probably not a suitable use case for a client rendering in this case. You've also seen the second line where the Japanese characters could be displayed probably. Obviously not all subtitles are as complex as that. Most of them are rather normal. So let's take a look at uh, rather normal examples. Start again with the burn invariant. Orin, this is a simple misunderstanding, and I... You cannot... I can, and I will. Now get your... What did you call it? Bony, bony ass. ass. Right. Bony ass out of my sight. I'm sorry. But I simply won't stand for that kind of talk. Okay, nothing special. We know how that subtitles look like. Next, the on-the-fly extraction. Let's see what this does. Or, and this is a simple misunderstanding, and I... You cannot... I can, and I will. Now get your... What did you call it? Bony, Bony ass. ass. Right. Bony ass out of my sight. I'm sorry. But I simply won't well, stand in this case, it's talk. obviously just uh, converting to web VTT subtitles. So in this case, there is no difference to the direct conversion setting. Or, and this is a simple misunderstanding, and I, you cannot. I can, and I will. Now get your, what did you call it? Bony, Bony ass. Right. Bony ass out of my sight. I'm sorry, but I simply won't stand for that kind of talk. So these are the three main preferences that a user can set. And now we're going to take a look at how these things can all be combined together with the new options that we have. 
Now, as there was a word in that scene that not everybody might find appropriate, let's take a look at the new profanity filter option. And uh, we can choose here the way the words are censored. I choose all but the first character there. And we also have an integrated word list for English, but you can also load your own word list from file, or you can enter an arbitrary number of words for testing. And so do I now to make it transparent. I've just entered that single word. And now we're going back well, to the scene and play it again. I, you cannot. I can and I will. Now get your, what did you call it? Pony oh, ass. Right. Bony ass out of my sight. I'm sorry. So for one or another, that might be quite useful. Back to our settings. Uh, besides uh, the profanity filtering, we got a number of other ways to manipulate the subtitle content. Let's take a look at the speaker name feature. Speaker names are often available or included in ASS subtitles but aren't displayed unless you have a feature like we have. And the only option you can choose here is the way the speaker name is prepended. We save this. We still have burn-in activated and let's go back to see. You can see here actually the names of the characters are prepended in square brackets. And especially when there are a lot of persons in scenes or often you don't know the names, their characters are badly introduced or can be sometimes really useful to have the individual names shown as part of the subtitles. Let's skip a bit forward. Yeah, okay, you see how it works. This was the way with Burnin, and it works in the same way, of course, when we convert the subtitles to WebVDT. Uh, just without the styles. That was the speaker name feature, but there's more. We got more ways to modify subtitle content, subtitle text in different ways. And next up is the text modification option, which is very specific and uh, uh, goes to a low level and it also allows you to do things like uh, changing case, uh, changing text to uppercase. For example, when somebody with reading disabilities needs to have really large and capitalized fonts, then you could use this for example. You can replace characters, remove characters. This is something we might uh, get back to in the next episode. And um, you can also replace or remove words, which can be useful in various situations. Just one example, something that happened to me uh, personally, in fact, is you might uh, know the Disney movie called um, Moana uh, in some countries and in other countries it's called Vianna. And um, that feature might be useful for such examples to adapt the subtitles to match the uh, actual uh, character names uh, used in the um, movie. And I'm sure there are more ways for what this feature can be useful. Um, going further down, we have a feature that allows to remove styles from subtitles, especially useful when you want to convert uh, or there are subtitles with extensive animations and you want to strip those or there are colors, for example, or fonts of subtitles that you want to change. Then you can use the remove inline styles uh, option. Then, of course, we also have something for adding or overriding styles. These are effective in cases of burn-in. And there's a whole bunch of options that allow to precisely control the appearance of subtitles when burning in. Let's look at an example. We just take the video that you've already seen before, just for you to remember how it looks like. Here it is. The subs at the bottom are unmodified. And now we're going to set some of the style override options. We set a different border style. We can, for example, configure it to show an opaque box as background to improve the readability of the subtitles. And we can choose a color for the background. Often you would choose black, but just for the effect, I'm choosing something extreme, 
So we all see what's going to happen. And another example I want to demonstrate is the margin setting. With the margin setting, you can control how far the subtitles are positioned from the edges of the screen. I'm just entering 100 here and save and let's go back and watch the video. You can see, of course, it's got the desired background and the subtitles are no longer as close to the bottom as they were before. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play with those options and find the best appearance for your own purposes or just play around a bit and see what you can achieve. What we've seen so far in this episode was all about text subtitles, but there's even more and we're going to explore that in the next episode. I hope you have enjoyed watching the very first episode of the MB Show and I hope to see you soon again on this channel. Thanks and goodbye.